I was determined not to watch it, and I was being a bit stubborn about it. I'd said in interviews during the week that I won't be watching it. You know, I think I'm washing my hair that night and stuff. And um, but I ended up watching it. I was a fan of Lance. I don't mind admitting it. I was 13 when he won the world title in Oslo in Norway, and that inspired me. And um, you know, I. My, my teenage years through 13, 16, he was, you know, winning bike races. Then he got the cancer. Then he came back and won the tour in 99 when I was 19 years of age. And that was like, wow, you know, the phenomenal time as a 19-year-old on the British track squad watching this guy win the tour. So, I, you know, I kind of grew up a bit of a fan of him, you know, slightly naive, as most of us are when you're just fans. You're just looking at it with the love of the sport. Um, and then, obviously, watching someone lie so convincingly for so long and having gone toe to toe with him, raced with him, spoken to him in races and things, you know, there was an element of this guy is pretty, you know, genuine actually and, and almost an wanting to believe that, you know, someone that good and that someone that had become such a star within our sport um, wouldn't lie to the rest of us, the riders, his competitors, this and the other. And so then, you know, I actually just wanted to watch it come out of his own mouth, you know. And so that, those opening sequence of the yes and no answers, to watch him admit to all those things, was made you angry, sad, slightly emotional, if I'm honest. Uh, my name is Lance Armstrong. I am a cancer survivor. I've been asked to come up here and talk about my story of survivorship. I'm a father of five. And yes, I won the Tour de France seven times. But then the anger kicks in, and I raced against this guy, and he stopped me from getting third in the Tour de France. And had I not won the Tour that last year, I would never ex have it got to experience standing on the podium on the Champs Elysees with my family and everything there. So, you know, the anger starts to come in then. And then, obviously, having won the Tour de France, and people then looking at the current winner of the Tour de France and reading uneducated pieces in the UK to the general public that, you know, I saw a list of all the winners of the tour and they, they crossed out every winner that had had problems with doping. And I think there was three in the current generation, myself, Sastry and Cadell. And it just didn't look good. And if I was, at that time, I was sort of slightly ashamed that my name had to be on this list with so many people. And I just, uh, that's quite sad, really. Just make sure everyone addresses me as uh, badly as I will, no problem. Um, well, I can't speak for everyone else, but I won the world's biggest bike race and we're an example of, of the way we raced as a team last year in the Tour de France. Obviously, people will point the finger because we were so strong. But this team, from the day it started, has been very clear on where we stand against it. We've got nothing to hide. We're a very open team and um, we won the world's biggest bike race. So